And hello, this is Jonathan Frazier. We are back in Houston for game two of three between the Owls and Owls of Florida Atlantic at Rice. FAU coming up with a big road conference victory last night, 14 to 10, a game they trailed six to two and 10 to six, 10 to six going into the eighth inning. And eight runs in their last two turns at the plate gave the visiting Owls a win over the home standing Owls. Keeping pace at the top of the conference standings, FAU now at 12 and a four, sitting a game ahead of Louisiana Tech and a half game ahead of Southern Miss. And winning game number 28 on the year last night. It'll be Vince Coletti against Addison Moss tonight. Before we get into today's lineups, let's head it over, head it over, send it over to head coach John McCormack in the FAU dugout from earlier this afternoon. Thank you. 
is no stranger in history. Built on the backs of hardworking young men, the owls have stood the test of time. 18 first round draft picks, 37 total major leaders. With a head coach boasting a 70% win record, it's no wonder Ryan has had 21 conference championships, 23 NCAA tournament appearances, 7 college World Series appearances, and 1 college World Series championship. The Owls have come a long way, but Ryan's baseball is not done making history. Fantastic rendition of our national anthem here this afternoon in Houston. Here are today's starting lineups first for your Owls. Leading off and playing shortstop today is Tyler Frank. Batting second, playing third, Joe Montez. David Miranda will hit third. He'll play right field. Cleanup batter is designated hitter, Pedro Pages. Eric Rivera is batting fifth in left field. Andrew Summerall gets the start at first base today, and he'll bat sixth. Cody Wilson in center field will hit seventh. Catching batting eighth, Kevin Abraham and Richie Nietzsche will hit ninth. He'll play second base. And they will face Rice right-hander Addison Moss. Good numbers for him today. We'll get that momentarily. He will face off, of course, against Owls, FAU Owls, right-hander Vince Coletti. And as they go over the Rice starting lineup and Moss gets his final warm-up tosses in, let's take a look at the league standings. So again, the Owls with the comeback victory last night, Florida Atlantic leading the CUSA standings with a mark of 12 and 4. 11-4 Southern Miss lurking behind, 11-5 Louisiana Tech right there as well. Both of those teams winners last night in their respective matchups. It's a four-way tie for fourth place right now between 8-8 eight eight UTSA, Charlotte, WKU, and UAB. And then in eighth place at 8-9 is FIU. 
Tied for ninth place right now are Middle Tennessee and Rice, both sitting at 6, 9, and 1. Marshall is 5 and 11. Old Dominion is 4 and 12. So a big game two today. That's all of them are. Tyler Frank comes in with a 500 batting average leading off games. Steps in 341 on the season. Looks like it's going to be about 103. Local time, 203 for our fans back in South Florida and all up and down the Eastern time zone, which of course is the best time zone. First pitch at 103 for Moss to Frank is chopped right back to Moss. We'll toss to first. That is a pitch and an out to start this ball game. Now batting Joe Montez. Well, last night, the Owls' first five hitters, Frank Montez, Miranda, Pages, and Rivera, first five hitters today as well, combined to go 14 for 24, scoring 12 runs and knocking in nine. And you'd think that that was a rout of a win, but it was a close one. It was 14 to 10. Four hour, 33 minute ball game. Montez has laid off the first two pitches and is ahead in the count, 2 and 0. So it was after midnight Eastern when last night's game ended. If you were still up with us, I applaud you. I can't imagine there were a lot of you. No offense. Bump ball into the stands, two balls, one strike to the 318 hitting Joe Montez. One home run, 22 runs batted in. Here's the 2-1. It's bumped back as well. Two balls, two strikes. Madison Moss is eighth start of the season, has a 1-3 record and a 2.16 earned run average. As good as that sounds, it's a little bit misleading. I'll tell you why in a minute. It's 2-2 two -two pitch. It's a called strike three. Two batters, two outs. Well, in 33 and a third innings, Moss has given up 29 hits and 17 runs, but of those 17 runs, more than half have been unearned. Only eight of the 17 against him count towards that ERA. With nine walks and 31 strikeouts, got a good strikeout to walk ratio. David Miranda to the plate now, who is scalding at the plate as of late, all the way up to 353 on the season. 3-5-3. One out to him is right down the middle of a called strike. So if, say, every pitch that, or I'm sorry, every run that Moss has given up on the year was earned, his ERA would be 4.59, not 2.16. A ball off the bat of Miranda, one and two. Not saying, just saying. Moss was scheduled to be the Sunday starter this weekend, but there's been a shake up in the Rice Owls rotation, just like there has been for a year. The one two to Miranda on the ground to second. In the short grass, making the play for a one two three inning. This Cruz. And the Owls are down in order. Sending it to the bottom half of the first. The scoreless game from Houston back with that bottom of one right after this. Thank you. 
But you, Vince Coletti, on the hill to start his 10th game of the year. It's 2-2 two two with a 3.08 arm red average and arguably come about his best start since joining the Florida Atlantic baseball team. Eight innings, six hit, no run baseball against UTSA last Saturday. Picking up win number two. He gets two and two. He's gone 49 and two-thirds innings, 43 hits, 17 runs all earned. See, 11 walks and 36 strikeouts. First pitch to Ford Proctor misses up, ball one. Proctor's hitting 380 on the season, four home runs. 28 runs batted in. And the 1-0 is chopped down the first baseline and foul past a lunging Andrew Summerall. One and one. Summerall at first, needs it at second. Frank at short and Montez at third. And then the outfield of Rivera. Wilson and Miranda, left center and right. Kevin Abraham draws the start at catcher here on Saturday afternoon. One one pitch. At the middle, it's a base hit for Ford Proctor to start the Rice first inning. Bringing up Ryan Chandler. Chandler at 344, no home runs, 20 RBI. Last minute change to the Owls lineup today, the FAU Owls lineup. Yesterday was a little more, um, what's the word, pressing, I guess. Met Nick a late scratch on the hill. Uh, today, the only change was. First pitch to Chandler is called strike at the knees. Uh, determined late that Jordan Poor was needed more in the bullpen today in case, just in case, especially after all the pitching last night. So he originally was supposed to start in left field with Nitsa out and Rivera at second. But, uh, gonna have his left-handed arm available. His left arm available. It's better in the FAU bullpen today. One pitch to Chandler, chop past Tyler Frank, the opposite way. And that quickly, Rice has two on, nobody out. For Trey Cruz. Cruz was one of the quieter offensive players, well, for either team last night, as he went one for five. With an RBI. Considering 16 total players had hits last night. Fifteen knocked in a run. And 13 scored a run. A slugfest from Reckling Park. 
who is awaiting the first pitch. And it's hit off the end of the bat, foul ground. Joe Montez will have an easy out at third to retire. Cruz on a pitch and bring up Chase Sarche. Sarche 253. He's got three home runs and 31 runs batted in. Another left-handed batter, so. The first four hitters in this Rice lineup all hit left-handed or, or are all hitting left-handed against Coletti because Cruz is a switch hitter. So if the Owls go to the pin, they've got some advantage there at the top of the Rice lineup. Later on in the game, much later, first pitch to Sarche is taken for or swung on a miss. So it's not So yeah, 24 runs and 32 hits last night in the dirt ball one. And went ahead and got the trusty calculator out, added up, and there were 389 pitches in last night's ball game. The nine inning, four hour and 33 minute series opener. Woody looks back at second. His 1-1 one -one is hit on the ground, nubbed to Nitsa. His only play will be the first. It's both runners and bats, but there are two outs. Braden Como next. Como 3.23, a home run and 20 run, 21 runs bad man. It's a uh, Cajun flair to the Como name, C-O-M-E-A-U-X. And ironically, he played for LSU, LSU. A junior college, I guess, in that same system. First pitch to him is taken outside ball one. The uh, old name of the school, LSU Nice, which I assume is a city in that system. What is 1-0? Over the outside corner, nice frame job there by Kevin Abraham. One ball, one strike. When Coletti last weekend pitched that eight innings of shutout baseball, swing and a miss. Como one and two. It was to Kevin Abraham behind the plate. I had a conversation with Coach Mack. Before that game, actually talking about pitcher-pitcher relationships and, and what that means, and we're going to stick with this at least this weekend. Just never know. One-two pitch misses outside. Two balls, two strikes. And, and, and to Coach Max, point it when the pitches are called out of the dugout. It could in theory not matter who the pit, the catcher is, but maybe there is a comfortability portion of that, something that can't be measured. 2-2 two -two pitch, chopper to short, Frank, gonna have to hustle, his throw is picked out of the dirt by Andrew Summerall. Nice play on the receiving end to end the inning. So Rice gets the first two on, but leave them both stranded. And the score remains scoreless. Zero to zero, top of two is next. Right after this.
Top of two, zero to zero, designated hitter Pedro Pages. Then Rivera, then Summerall, if anyone reaches Cody Wilson. First pitch from Moss to Pages, swing and a miss. He got a piece, but it's 0-1. Pedro hit a two-run home run in last night's ninth inning. Creates some breathing room and actually in the scoring in a 14-10 game. 0-1 is up. One ball, one strike. Take a look at the Rice defense today. Very similar to last night. One one. Popped up. First base side, out of play. Catching again, Justin Collins. First and third is the same. Sarche, Cruz, Proctor, and Como. A little bit different outfield alignment today as Dominic Cox will draw the start of left field. Chandler's in center and Knighting is in right. Dunlap, last night's starting left fielder, is actually today's starting designated hitter. One ball and two strikes to Pedro. There's the pitch. Misses up. And it's two and two. The Owls wearing blue tops and gray bottoms here today. The uh, cursive Owls Across the chest in white with red trim. Bryce in all white. Pages, one hopper to third. Como lobs it across. Miller had time and does to get Pages out. One down. Next up, Eric Rivera. Rivera was retired just one time last night, and that came in his last at bat. He reached the first five times he came to the plate. Three for four to raise his batting average on the season to 304 with three homers and his two RBIs gives him now 31 on the season to continue to lead this FAU squad. And he takes a strike in the knees 0-1. Just low. One ball, one strike. Rivera playing left field for the second straight game. Hits this on the ground. Proctor with a nice play. Spins and throws in time. Doing the splits at first base. It's Sarche to complete the put out. Proctor went a long way up the middle to get to that ball. Picked it up off the ground, had to spin to make a strike, and he did. And with two away, Andrew Summerall. So who did he come on as a defensive replacement last night? After Lambert was pinch hit for, did not have an at-bat in the game. Offers, tries to slow down. Starts off or holds up and takes ball one. And looks at a strike on the outside corner. One ball, one strike. Strike. The Big Owls first baseman. Hitting 190 on the year, four homers. Ten runs batted in. One two pitch. Low and inside. Two and two. to the plate. Low again. Count is full. 
Cookie Wilson on deck. Should Summerall reach? We're in the top of the second inning. Owls, FAU Owls looking for their first base runner this afternoon. Payoff pitch. Summerall chase ball four. It was up. Just could not catch up to the fastball. Six up and six down for Moss and Rice. The bottom of the second is next in a scoreless game. Coletti returns to the hill. He hops the foul line after this. Bottom of the second inning, right-handed batting, Justin Collins takes ball one. Zero to zero game here from Houston. This is where things sort of went off the rails last night for FAU pitching. Is nice came through with a six-run second. Started a teeter-totter effect for the rest of the ball game. Three and zero to Collins. Cluddy gave up hits to the first two batters of this in this Rice lineup, and then settled down to get three outs in a row. The first, it's three zero here is right down the pipe. Called strike. I don't know where Collins is going. He was three or four steps up the line. Three and one. Off the blade away, but he will issue an inning opening walk. Vince has only walked 11 batters in a little over 50 innings now. There's nobody out. The DH, Andrew Dunlap, 276. Four home runs and 11 runs batted in. Dunlap had uh, reached three times last night with a double and two walks. Well, he seems to have lost a little bit of control here to start this second inning as he issues ball one here to Dunlap. It's going to bring Kevin Abraham out from behind home plate to speak to him. Strike after that quick combo. It's a count of one and one. 
and the 1-1. One -one. Just off the outside corner. Two balls, one strike. ball off of Dunlap's leg. He collapses in a heave at home plate. Give him some time to recover as the Cavs now 2-2. Two and two. So he seems to be okay. He didn't even have a uh, visit athletic training professional. A couple of practice swings, he's back into the box. Waiting 2-2 from Coletti. Going outside, three balls, two strikes. the runner 3-2 is low and just as it was in the first the right second sees the first two runners reach this time instead of hits both on walks David Cop's gonna come talk with Letty and Abraham the last thing that FAU pitching needs today is having to go to the bullpen early especially after last night draw the entire infield to the mound to speak this over. And quick enough conversation that our home plate umpire, who today is John Wolf, did not have to break it up. Wolf behind the plate, Trent Petrie at first base, and Scott Wilkerson is at third. Expecting a walk, or excuse me, expecting a bunt. Infield drawn in, and first pitch from Paletti to Nighting is upstairs, ball one. Frank breaks for second, Paletti no throw. Here's the bun. It's right back to Kaledi. His play will be at third for one, and that's all they'll get. Looks like maybe Collins slid into Montez. He's hobbling a little bit on his right foot, but sacrifice bun is unsuccessful as the lead runner is put out one to five. One out for the Left fielder, Dominic Cox, came in late last night as a defensive replacement, also had an at-bat, went 0 for 1. Left field. The freshman that we really didn't get to talk about last night. Takes a called strike on the outside corner, 0-1. But 175 pound freshman from Richmond, Texas. Takes a blow, one ball, one strike. Hitting 179 this season. Zero home runs, nine runs batted in. Steps in, two on, one out. Then one pitch. There's another bunt. This is a good one. Montez charging. His play will be to first, and it will be in time. 
runners advance, but again, two outs. Ford Proctor. So in the Reich's first inning, two singles, a foul out, a ground out to advance both runners with that being the second out and then a ground out to end it. In this inning, two walks, fielder's choice, runner still at first and second. Sacrifice bunt has put them at second and third with two outs. Letty will deal with Proctor trying to keep Rice off the scoreboard first on this Saturday afternoon. Just low to Proctor 1-0. Inside corner doesn't get the call. Two balls and no strikes. And what FAU fans that made the trip wanted that call and didn't get it. And that one's over for a called strike. Two and one. Dunlap at third, 90 at second. Judging by. Stolen base statistics. Pretty good speed, at least for 90. 2 1 is a swing and a miss. Got Proctor to chase one. A slow breaking ball in the dirt. Two balls, two strikes. Bloody trying to bear down again. Strand two rice runners. 2 2 pitch to Proctor. It's just a piece to stay alive. Still two balls and two strikes. Going inside, the count is full. If Proctor reaches, Chandler would come to the plate. deal for the FAU defense. Here we go with the 3-2. Swing and a miss. Big strikeout for Coletti. And the dugout spills onto the field to co congratulate Vince on again keeping Rice off the board and keeping it at a 0-0 game. We'll go to the top of the third inning. Cody Wilson, Kevin Abraham, and Richie Nietzsche next after this.
first pitch of this bottom, or sorry, sorry, top of the third inning. It's Cody Wilson, he takes it for a strike on one. Started off for the pitch up, lays off for a 1-1 one, one count. It's all time here in this top of the third inning. Now fans for the largest selection of FA, official FAU gear on the planet, visit itsowltime.com. Wilson takes one up, two balls, one strike. It's all time all weekend on both sides as uh, the FAU Owls and the Rice Owls battling for game two of three here. Some called strike, or swinging strike. Buddy Wilson looks like we're getting a little bit of the P word from the sky here. Houston, some fans scurrying underneath the uh, grandstand, some just stubbornly staying out in it. Three and two to Wilson. That was always me as a baseball fan, staying as long as I possibly could, even if it was to the detriment of my health. 3-2 pitch, and Moss gets Wilson to chase one outside. He has retired the first seven Owls in order. Kevin Abraham to the plate. Abraham, his first appearance of the series. It's a couple of home runs this season, eight runs batted in. Got uh, people out in the uh, the new barn grill area here at Franklin Park. Patio umbrellas there. Abraham fouls it off for strike one. Misses away one ball, one strike. Moss just a sophomore. And again, his eighth start of the season. Fastball up. Two balls, one strike. He is six foot one, one hundred and seventy pounds. From Spring, Texas, and Oak Ridge High School. Last season, he appeared in 23 games, all but one in relief. A ball off the bat of Abraham, two and two. So, counting today, eight games, eight starts in 2018, 31 games, nine starts in his two year. Rice career. Abraham puts a charge into this one to left, but gonna get underneath of it just a bit. Hang up for Dominic Cox, and there's two away. It's about the hardest hit ball off of the NFAU bat here today. Turned out to be a routine fly out. Now the nine hole hitter, Rich Nietzsche, and 250. Home run and eight runs batted in. It's a start number 16 on the season. Two of the series. Ball strike on the outside corner, number one. His 15th start of the year at second base. Kind of settled into a little bit of a platoon there. Fouls it off to drop down 0-2 in the count. Rivera's in left field, Neitz is at second base. Rivera's at second base, it's kind of up in the air as to who will be starting in left field. Your owls. Go to pitch. At the end of the bat and foul. We'll do it again. 
we've seen Johnson and left. We, in the original starting lineup today, saw Jordan pour in. Yeah. Before the change was made. Here's the 0 2. Got him up. Strike zone. Chase and swing and miss. Addison Moss is perfect through three innings of work. Nine up and nine down. Ref you hitting. Walk Luddy's put some runners on. He's kept Rice off the board as well. It's zero to zero. It's the bottom of the third. He's coming at you next. After this. Innings of work. Vince Gladys has given up two hits and two walks, but no runs. We'll deal with Chandler Cruz and Sarche in the bottom of the third inning of this frame. Brought to you by AT&T, proud sponsor of FEU Athletics. Gladys misses low ball one. First two batters in each inning against Gladys have reached to. Uh, Stop that pattern here in the third. It's a called strike to the left-handed batting Chandler. Back in the first inning, he reached on the single and was stranded. It's two and one to him. There's a hard shot past Nita and into center field. Chandler is two for two. For a one for three nine last night with three walks. He's on for the sixth time in the series. Trey Cruz is next. He saw one pitch in the first inning and fouled it. Popped it up the foul ground to Joe Montez. First, as a team, I eight stolen bases for Rice. We'll stay put as the pitch is in the dirt to Cruz and knocked down by Abraham. One and up in his career, Chandler has stolen 26 bases in this his fourth season. One no pitch, low and outside. Two and up. Two and one. Foul 
foul ball right there at home plate. Two and two. No score in this game. No base runners yet. Florida Atlantic as the runner goes. It's lined in the center over a leaping Tyler Frank. And again, Bryce has the first two runners on. Do up Chase Sarche. Round out to second. His first time up. Step off ahead of the first pitch. Another lefty, Sarche. Four hits now for Rice. He'll square to Bunt and pops it up. Pedro Pages will make the catch in foul ground. And that's a big first out of this third inning for FAU. Braden Como. Como grounded to shorts in the first inning. Well, Sarche had been prior to this successful on a couple of sacrifice hits, but it was not on this one. Pitch a strike to come up. Swing to miss, 0 and 2. Buddy, this will be pitch number 50 for the right hander. Oops, 2. Down off the end of the bat, well out of play. Another 0 and 2 pitch. For Letty to Como. With Cruz at first and Chandler at second. Bunch of C's there right now for uh, these two squads. Collins on deck. 0 2, rolling away. Not get Como to chase that purpose pitch. One in two. Another foul ball. A souvenir for some young fans. First base side. A couple of games already underway. See USA play. Actually, this game, it's like all of them, all of the series across the conference have started. A couple of double headers this afternoon. We'll get score updates to you. Throughout the course of this game, Louisiana Tech and Marshall started an hour. Well, now wait. Oh, Central time. I got it. Uh, as this game started early, here's a shot to the right. That will drop, and it's going to go to the warning track. Miranda picks it up, gives it to Wilson. Wilson fires it in, and it'll be a triple for Como. And finally, Rice breaks through after some opportunities. Their first two turns. This one comes to fruition. 
Two to nothing. Rice. It's still just one out for the catcher, Justin Collins. So we started this game two hours, or an hour early. Central time, central time. An hour early. At the same time as Louisiana Tech at Marshall, and that's the same, at the same time as Old Dominion at Charlotte. The rest of the series will start about five minutes from their various locations. All that to say. First pitch to Collins up, ball one. Kumo showing some speed. And Miranda had to go a long way to get that, and as he slid and picked it up, he kind of shoveled it to Wilson to make the throw in. But at that point, no shot at any of the three Rice runners. 1-0 to Collins, right over the middle for a called strike. Wait, did they call that a ball? 2-0. Don't know how that missed or where it missed. There's a foul ball off the mask of Abraham and all the way to the backstop. 2-1. With Como at third and one out. Liddy had bent but didn't break in his first two innings of work. But Rice able to uh, get to him here in the bottom of the third. 2 1 pitch. And that hits Collins. And he will be held right there at home plate. They say he did not get out of the way, or at least, or maybe even leaned into it. That's going to bring Wayne Graham out into the dugout, out of the dugout to speak to John Wolf. It hit him, and immediately Wolf pointed to home plate and said, "Come back here." Coach Graham seems to agree with the decision and will mosey on back in the first base dugout. It's now three and one to Collins. Fouls it off. First base side, three and two. Coletti said his fair share of batters this year. It's a team high, seven. He has hit, put on pace, but it's uh, Collins here. Does not count against him, only that it was a ball. Full count now. Infield is in. Going to cut down on a possible third rice run. Three, two. Chopped to short, runner not going. Frank will throw to first. And that is a big second out. It will drop back into normal depth as Andrew Dunlap Walked his first time up. With his teammate Como with third and two outs. Called strike outside corner at the knee, 0 and 1. And that one caught some dirt. One ball, one strike. Rice 2, FAU 0. Bloody trying to keep it right there. 1-1. One, one. And it's up the middle for a base hit. He won't be able to keep it right there as it's 3 to nothing. A two out single. By Dunlap. Right, Bradley Knighting 
Maddie tried to sacrifice a couple of his teammates over in the second inning, but wanted it right back to Letty, who got the lead runner. So he's over one with the fielder's choice. Going inside ball one. One strike. As these innings continue to unfold and extend, the pitch count for Bloody rises as it's 65 now. Complete the third. One one. Now down the first baseline. One and two. Three games up with the uh, JP Heath of the Rice. Radio Network. Bob Pellett, he's not an overpowering pitcher and he won't strike a ton of batters out. Be good to get one here. Let's chop to second. Needs will have to back up on it, but he will make the play in time. And Rice is set down in the third, but a three run. Rice third on four hits. They strand a runner. Have a three to nothing lead. Meanwhile, FAU looking for their first base runner of the night. Going to the top of the fourth, trailing by three. Race three, FAU zero. Top of the fourth inning, Madison Moss has a perfect game going. As he's faced nine FAU hitters and he's retired. Nine FAU hitters on just 39 pitches with 25 strikes. Obviously no hits, no walks. And at this point, Struck out four of the nine. We'll face Tyler Frank. One pitch and one out in the first. Come back to right to Moss. Looks at a strike at the knees. One one. Frank Montez Miranda. Anyone reaches. And again, it would be the first FAU runner to reach. Pedro Pages. Down three. A one. Inside, one ball, one strike. The Owls, the FAU Owls, being down by three, not the most that they've trailed in this series. Down four twice last night on separate occasions of six to two and ten to six. One one pitch to Frank. Hits this one on a rope to center. Chandler going back. Long run at the track. Makes the catch. 
the 10th straight. Long run for Chandler, but hold it in like a receiver. Over the shoulder. Near that 400 foot marker in right center field. It's just right of center on the batter's eye out there. Joe Montez struck out looking in the first. Looking to sneak this one up the middle. Proctor cuts it off. His throw is a strike, and there's two away. Well, after a season high 18 hits and 14 runs last night, two outs into the fourth, and maybe you hasn't gotten a runner on. Here today, Miranda grounded the second and the first. First pitch is a strike to him, 0 and 1. Inside, one ball, one strike. Got him swinging and down to a knee on that pitch. Slow breaking ball, he was ahead of it. It's one and two. Third strike and Brands down. And it's 12 up and 12 down. For Moss and Rice. Three to nothing Rice. We'll go to the bottom of the fourth inning if when you think Lexus. Think JM Lexus. We'll bring you the bottom half. Next. Dominic Cox, then Proctor and Chandler in the Rice fourth. They are ahead of the other Owls, your Owls, the FAU Owls, three to nothing. Bloody's first offering outside, ball one. Foul ball back, one and one. Looks like there's some movement towards the Owls bullpen. Wide spot in this field, so we don't know whom is out there. One one pitch. All outside. Three runs, six hits for Rice. 
All three runs and four of those hits coming last inning. Swing and a miss, two and two. No runs, no hits, no errors, no runners. Nothing for the FAU offense as of yet. 2-2. Two, two. Fouled off, and we'll do it again. FAU, Florida Public Utilities, is a sponsor of FAU Athletics. Conserve energy and save money. Well, maybe the FAU offense is conserving their energy to the later innings. Buddy gets a swing and a miss here to start the fourth, and that is the first time that a Rice leadoff hitter has been retired in an inning today. <laughs> Along those same, li same lines, Coletti's looking to retire the second Rice batter in an inning for the first time. So he'll deal with Ford Proctor. There's one for two. A single and a strikeout. At that point, a big strikeout. It's, uh, Two on and two out. Runners at second and third in the second four. We have BU defense. 0 and 1 here. This one's low, one ball, one strike. Here are your scoring updates from across Conference USA. We've got three games in progress right now. 1 1 pitch. Fouled off towards the Rice dugout. In the bottom of the third inning, and this is in uh, Beckley, West Virginia. Marshall is leading Louisiana Tech one to nothing. In the top of the third inning in Charlotte, Charlotte one, Old Dominion zero. Just low from Coletti there, two and two. And in the bottom of the first inning in Hattiesburg, Southern Miss, Middle Tennessee are scoreless. That's the first two games to scheduled to be played at Southern Miss. Also today, in Birmingham, we'll have two games, WKU and UAB. Proctor up the middle, a base hit. Number seven for Rice, hit number two for Proctor today. The doubleheader in Birmingham is scheduled to begin until 3 p.m. TSA are taking today off. They had a double winner last night that was split between the two teams. They'll have their finale tomorrow in San Antonio, beginning at noon Central Time. Runner at first, one out for Ryan Chandler, who is two for two with two singles and a run scored. Outside ball one. Strikes 80 pitches now, 8 0 for Coletti. He not only saw his uh, season high in innings last Saturday, it was, his, it was his season high in pitches as well. Throw of the first. Taking care of Proctor there. As he threw 100 pitches even against the Roadrunners. Get this one over for a called strike. Two and one. Pass summer all in right field off the bat of Chandler, who's three for three. Going first to third is Proctor. They let it through, but he's in safely with the slide. There it looked like I, I thought someone had a shot at it. I don't know if it went under his glove or if he misjudged it. But Rice is threatening again in the bottom of the fourth inning. Two on and one out. Trey Cruz. Cruz is one for two with a single and a run score. He received some last minute one to one instruction from.
Montez in on the grass at third. Cruz not showing anything there as he takes it outside, ball one. Field a double play depth, one out, 1-0. One -oh. It's up, two balls, no strikes. base or miss it bad. Take away the possibility of the double play. The 2-0 is lined to short. Frank will take it on a hop. Can't find it. Now we'll shovel it to second. And get Chandler holding it third with Proctor. Tried to take it on the short hop and I think maybe attempt a double play there, but Kicked it around a little bit, and by the time he did come up with it, he easily got Chandler out, but no chance for a throw to first. Two away. Runner still on the corners for Chase Sarche. Oh, for two today. Tried to bunt his last time up and popped up to the catcher. That one was inside ball one. Fouled off right to the on deck hitter. Como. Como's had the big hit of the game. Two run triple last inning. One and one to Sarche. Throw over to first and diving back in his crew. So, FAU in the grand scheme of things. Pretty lucky to only be trailing three to nothing, considering Bryce has had two runners on in every inning. We're only in the fourth. One one. Popped up. Very angry with himself as Sarche foul ground at Summerall. That will end the Rice fourth. Another scoreless inning for Coletti. He's struggled to get there, but he is able to keep it at a three to nothing deficit. Now he needs some help from his offense who hasn't done squat today. They've been uh, retired 12 up and 12 down. Pedro Pages will be the first to try to snap the street and Rivera then Summerall. In the uh, top of the fifth inning here from Houston, have that to you by Sage Dental, all dentistry, one place. Fifth inning, Pedro Pages awaits a call to the plate. He's over one. Oh, it's going to be a pattern stated in this inning. Ground out to third. He's on the other bat. The Owls are over 12. The U Owls are over 12 against Addison Moss, who's throwing a perfect game. As we start at the top of the fifth inning, and 
The Rice offense scored three in the third, leading three to nothing. Page's first pitch swinging, liner right into the glove for Proctor. Had he put that five feet to the right or five feet to the left, he would have had a single. Instead, he's out. 13 in a row. Now Eric Rivera. Rivera grounded to short. And is 0 for 1. Straight to Rivera. Last no hitter thrown by Rice came all the way back in 1998, Jeff Nichols. And that'll do it right there. Eric Rivera into center field will break it up. Well, I figure if I talked about it enough, it would jinx it, and it did. The first Owls base runner reaches with one out in the fifth. First FAU Owl base runner. Rivera. His fourth hit of the series. Now Andrew Summerall of one with the strikeout swinging. In the second inning. Probably two, four to six to three, and that'll end the end. Well, that quickly, BU gets their first base runner, and that quickly it's erased. Mosses face the minimum. 15 hitters through five, and a three to nothing game. It's the sixth. No, it's not. It's the bottom of the fifth next. And we'll have that to you. Once by IBEW, International Brotherhood of Electrical Works, Local Union, Dunlap, Vince Coletti back out for the fifth. Three to nothing game in favor of Rice. Combo had a two run triple in the third, eventually score on the single by Dunlap. So that makes up all three runs. Two knocked in by Combo, one scored by Combo. First pitch way outside, ball one. Here comes pitch number 90 from Coletti, trying to save the bullpen a bit. 
Como. High fly ball to center. Can of corn. Cousin Wilson. One away. Next up, Justin Collins. Race catcher has walked and grounded into a well, ground out to short. Still a little overcast here in Houston. The uh, has called for some precipitation throughout the game, but cleared up as we got to the park and it seems to still be clear according to the app that I look at. Up until about 7 o'clock tonight, so not going to go. 0 1 to Justin Collins. Letty kicks the pitch. Fell down the right field line. 0 and 2. Right now, as the O2 comes to the plate, bounces in one ball, two strike at 73 degrees. A little bit of a, of a breeze that's looking at the flags on the left. Just blowing out to the left center a little bit. One two pitch. Outside again. Two balls, two strikes. Flags at half staff here at Franklin Park. A memoriam of former First Lady Barbara Bush. His, her services this morning drew a huge crowd in Houston. It was nearby a hotel that the FAU team was staying at. Didn't didn't affect traffic too awfully much any, any more than normal here in this metro area this morning. Three and two to Collins. Time called to the plate. Foul ball. Fouled off twice by Collins. He fouled it right there at home plate and on his backswing, he chopped it back to the backstop over his shoulder. It's not something you see every day. Here we go with another payoff. And another foul ball. Into the Owls dugout and back out of the Owls dugout. The uh, Each side, first and third base, Dugouts are sunk into the ground. There's no fencing in front of them. Um, and you've got players that sit on the benches or sit on the stairs, on the stairs up onto the field watching the game. 3-2 pitch. On the ground is short. Frank backhands it. His throw over is scooped up by Summerall. It's the second time in this game that Andrew Summerall has picked one successfully out of the ground. Two now. Are you looking for a quick, easy inning? He'll now face Andrew Dunlap, who he's had trouble with today. Walk and a single. Dunlap's two out single in the third produced Rice's third run. Sawed off on the first pitch. Go up and over the bleachers to my right. One. And it's two and one now to Dunlap. Here's the pitch. 
can't get the inside corner call. Three and one. Well, he's up and over the century mark now and pitches 102. So this is the most he's thrown in a game for your Owls. 3-1 pitch. Pops up. Right field. David Miranda hauls it in, and Coletti gets a 1-2-3. Fifth inning, his first of this ball game. Much needed. Sending it to the sixth. A three to nothing game. Rice in the lead. Top of the sixth. We'll have that your way. By South Florida Ford dealers. Ford, go further. Top of the sixth inning, bottom third of the FAU lineup against Addison Moss, who's given up just one hit. They came last inning. Terry Rivera, and immediately the next pitch to Andrew Summerall was a ground out double play. So, 15 batters faced one hit on the Rice right hander. Now he'll deal with Cody Wilson, Kevin Abraham, and Richie Nietzsche. Two of which struck out against him. The middle batter, Abraham, flew out. Looks at a called strike on one. Cody went two for four last night, including an eighth inning home run that turned out to be the game winning RBI. His ninth of the season. Came into today's game batting 279 down to 277. Strike out. Fights this one off to the right side. Off the protective netting in front of that bar he will. 0 2. Three runs, eight hits, no errors for Rice. No runs, a hit. Whoever's for FAU, I would assume. You know what they get for assuming a new pitcher for FAU in the next one. High chopper to second for Wilson, and unable to make the backhand play is the second baseman. Cruz, it's going to be a base hit for Wilson, who very well may have beaten it out had Cruz fielded it cleanly. And if Wilson not sure if he was hustling up the line looking right at the first base bag or not, he may have been able to make it to second and he rounded quickly, but all that to say he's at first base, just deal with that with the leadoff batter on. Kevin Abraham. Wilson showing off his speed, of which he has plenty. Abraham had the hardest hit ball, I would venture to say, for FAU today, a fly out to left. The third. He, excuse me, swings it right into the rice dugout for strike one. So they're not being asked upon at least on that. First pitch and does not have a sacrifice buck in the season. In a three run game. to be swinging away. Yo one. Abraham to right. Pretty deep. Going back is 90. He's not going to be able to come up with it. All the way to the wall. Wilson's going to be waved around. 
Hits the third base bag, coming to the plate, he slides. No, he's upstanding. Just ahead of the throw, an RBI double for Kevin Abraham and the Owls of FAU are on the board. Nobody out, Richie Nietzsche, first Wayne Graham. Graham saunters out of the Rice dugout. What is now a three to one game and Rice is gonna get somebody up in their bullpen. As they take the tarp off out in right field, starting to get loose is Evan Kravitz. We saw him last night. Conversation quickly wrapped in. Needs to getting some last minute signs from the dugout. Abraham, good contact both times to the plate. This time his double falls in. A Nietzsche to second. It's caught on a dive and it's going to be a double play. Abraham is straight too far off the bag. He's doubled off. for two outs. That is a big double play. Tyler Frank with two outs. Take away a run scoring opportunity from Frank as well. With the catch and throw by Cruz, Proctor covering. Today, a grounder back to the pitcher, a fly out to center. Nice play by Chandler. First pitch to him. Started to go and held up. All run. Moss to be expected after just giving him a hit coming into the inning, and a couple in this has been pitch efficient. So it'll just be 60 for him. With two outs in the fifth. 1 0. Outside corner, a called strike. Nice turns, pitch. Low and outside, two and one. Frank had a fantastic stat line last night. Three for four, two doubles and a single, two walks, an RBI, and four runs scored. 2-1 to him is a slow roller to short. Proctor throws out his opposite number by a couple of steps. And Frank is over three. A run on two hits, though, for FAU. They cut the deficit to three to one. Bottom of the sixth is next. Coletti's coming back out on the sword today. After the one, two, three, fifth, that run scoring inning for FAU. Brought to you by Beer Garden Boca Raton. Beer is brought to hands right in the heart of downtown Boca Raton, located in Royal Palm Place.
Three to one, Rice over your owls from FAU. There's pitch to Bradley Knighting is low, ball one from Vince Coletti. Trying to save the bullpen here in game two after throwing well, five pitchers last night. Two hopper to second, Richie needs in the grass and shallow right. Throws on to Summerall, one away. Bailey now, Vince Coletti is retired six in a row. Face the 0 for 2 Dominic Cox next, a front foot round out and a strikeout. Are you finally on the board with a with an RBI double by Kevin Abraham in the sixth inning. Cut it to 3 to 1. Letty misses outside to Cox, 1 0. Outside again, two balls, no strikes. Some play picked up quite a bit here today compared to last night. Swing and a miss. Two balls, one strike. Not even two hours into this ball game. And on the bottom of the sixth, two one. Took an hour and fifteen to play two innings last night. In comparison. Bell ball back for two balls, two strikes. Somebody no idea who is winding up in the FAU pen. I can tell you that Jacob Pino's catching. Don't know who's pitching. Strikeout swinging by Coletti at Cox. Any time he's gone down. Swinging. The two away, the two for three for Proctor. Two singles, two singles sandwich. Around a strikeout. Proctor, all three of uh, Coletti's K's. Adding up correctly, yes. I've come against these. The last batter in this batter. Cox. Proctor. Foul ball to the Rice dugout. 0 oh 1. on one ball, one strike. Tomorrow's series finale will begin at the same time that today's game began. 1 p.m. local time, 2 p.m. Back in Boca Raton, 2 p.m. Eastern. 1-1 one, one pitch to center field. Off the bat of Crawford, he's got three hits. I was going to say the second, but too far for Nietzsche to get to it. Proctor has matched the FAU offense with three hits, and I think that's going to do it for Vince Coletti. They were going to give him the inning. He keep Rice off the base pass, and he got the first two out, but the two-out single will spell the end of the day for a, uh, a battle-tested and a, uh, a gritty performance for Vince Coletti. He gives up three runs, but uh, pitches into the sixth, nearly got out of it. The Owls are going to turn to four. Jordan Four will throw next for FAU after this.
left-hander Jordan Poor will face the left-handed batting Ryan Chandler with Proctor at first and two outs. Bottom of the sixth inning. Poor was originally slated to be the starting left fielder today. Kept out of the lineup for such a situation. Casey was needed out of the bullpen. And unsurprisingly, he has been needed today. Barring, obviously, a complete game from Coletti, the Owls were going to have to dip into the pen and kind of a left-handed stacked lineup for Rice and plays into four coming on. Chandler was three for three against Coletti. Now the first pitch from four is a breaking ball that is low for ball one. Jordan's kind of a man without an island now. He's a pitcher and a position player. He has two islands, either way you want to look at it. 1-0. Just high. Two balls, no strikes. Not sure this morning who or with which group he was supposed to warm up. He was supposed to throw with the position players or go out and start working with the pitchers. It was a last-minute uh, change with the FAU lineup. 2 0 is right over for a ball strike. I'll look over at first. Here's the 2 1. Last ball outside. 3 and 1. Trey Cruz on deck. Well, Possibly hit from the right side. Switch hitter against the lefty. Or if Chandler reaches. 3 1. Chandler rips it to right. He's got a four hit day. A couple of hops in front of Miranda. Proctor will take the turn. Hit the third. With two outs, it is Trey Cruz. Four times last night, four times today. You could categorize him under that thorn on the side of that you pitching. Although he wouldn't be the only one with as many hits when there's reached last night. Now ten hits today for Rice. They're threatening with two outs in the sixth. Trey Cruz is one for three. Zat takes a called strike in the outside corner, 0-1. Oh, outside, one ball, one strike. The first fish was a strike, correct? Yes, it's 1-1. One and one. Two on the scoreboard. Low and inside. Two balls, one strike. Proctor at third, Chandler at first. We've said that a couple of times today. Up the end of the bat, first base side. That'll be another souvenir. It's two and two. Leaping Tyler Frank, who makes a nice catch. Two in the inning. Runners eight and nine stranded by Rice in this game. Four gives up a hit, but does his job to get Cruz out and keep it at this three to one spread. Montez Miranda Pages. In the Owls seventh, the FAU Owls will try to generate some power in this. Uh, Top of the seventh inning, Assurance Power System, APS, is your generator sales and service systems.
top of the seventh inning. And what has been a decently lopsided game as far as base runners, as far as hits. Ten to three. Still a close ball game in the scoring column. Three to one Rice for you. Hanging around based on some good uh, clutch pitching and some, uh, some defense as well. Be Montez, the first pitch is way inside, ball one. Montez today is strike out in the ground out 0 for 2. The Owls, the U Owls, took until the fifth inning for their first hit, sixth inning for their first run. But again, still within shouting distance, Montez. Runs it down the third baseline, 1-1. One one. After a 2 for 5 9 last night and a walk, Montez came into the game batting 318. He's dropped down 314 at this point. Waiting the 1-1. One one. Up the middle, past both the pitcher Moss and the diving Trey Cruz for the fourth FAU hit. And for the second inning in a row, the leadoff batter is on for David Miranda. Miranda sporting uniform number 35 here this afternoon. We'll step in also 0 for 2, a round out and a strikeout. And representing the tying run. We know the drop of a hat and crack of the bat. David Miranda can tie this game up. Snap throw over to first. Montez back in standing. Miranda went three for five last night. Three runs scored. Three runs batted in. And a double and a couple of singles. Sacrifice fly. Another fill up with the stat sheet. High and outside ball one. I have learned throughout this season, the course of this year, to not ever count that figure out. Uh, I wouldn't even begin to, trailing by only two runs, even with just a handful of hits in the game. The 1-0. Miranda pops it up to center. Chandler comes in on the jog. One down. Now Pedro Pages. Pages nearly had the Owls first hit his last time up and line out to short on it. Ended up being played pretty perfectly by Fort Proctor at shortstop. Over two as well, that line out and the ground out to third. We'll step out ahead of the first pitch to him here. Montez at first has one stolen base attempt and it was unsuccessful in the season. They just takes a tall strike on one. And yeah, this, this squad, this Owls team, not a, not a running team. It's just not nature, not in their strategy. Yo one. Pages is able to hold up one ball, one strike. As a freshman junior college, Joe Montez one for four on stolen bases. As a sophomore, he was six for eleven. One pitch. Foul ball right hand side. Of course, trailing by two, tying run at the plate. Or any more risk than necessary here. Two strikes. 70 pitches now for Moss. Time 
hold somewhere. Long look over it first. This hasn't had to work out of the stretch too often in this game. Liner into right field. That'll drop for a base hit. Montez will take the turn. He'll go on to third as Pages singles him there. And FAU threatening in the seventh inning. Eric Rivera to the plate. meaning at the mound between this just the catcher, Collins. Addison Moss, Eric Rivera had the team's first hit. Again, that came with one out in the fifth. After Moss had retired the first 13 batters he faced in this game. Rivera singled, was erased on the double play, but now comes to the dish. Runners on the corners and just one out. Fake to third and both the runners go back to the bags, their bags. Montez is at third, Pages is at first. Right down the middle to Rivera, 0-1. For Rice, a left-hander, I assume that to be Kravitz still. Throwing out in the right field bullpen. The issue being Rice doesn't have uniform numbers on the front of their jerseys here today. In the dirt. One ball, one strike. Rivera. Oh, again, two and one. Andrew Summer, all left handed batter on deck. and in the hole. You trying to mount another comeback after come from behind come from behind victory last night. 2-1. Bear gets a piece. Fouls it back two and two. Sets ready for the break even pitch. It's fouled away. We'll do it again. Which is the top of the grandstand over to my right. Two balls, two strikes, one out. Tying run at first base. Go ahead and run at the plate near the two-hour mark of this ball game. Top of the seventh inning, the 2-2. Guess that missed low. Rice fans wanted it, wanted it badly. The count is now full to Rivera. First, and this one's gonna get a bit away from the first base in Charche. Montez started towards the plate, but retreated back to third. No need to risk that. For sure. So again, full count to Rivera, one out. 
Lines it into left center. That's going to drop for a base hit. It's a one-run game. Pages is going to try for third. The throw will come into second. It's three to two. Good heads up base running by the Owls. DH this afternoon, normally catcher. And Wayne Graham out of the Rice dugout. Three hits in the inning in a one-run ball game. going to do it for Addison Moss. Started out as good as you could possibly get. Leaves with the tying run at third. One out here in this top of the seventh inning. Very similar situation that we saw Rice reliever Evan Kravitz last night. In the top of the eighth inning, Kravitz came on and was looking to face Gunnar Lambert. The Owls chose to bring Diamond Johnson in, a right-handed batter, and he struck out looking. And then in the next at bat, or I'm sorry, during that at bat, Eric Rivera, who was at first base, and he is now, tried to steal second, bowling into center field, and at third base, standing right there, Pedro Page has scored to tie the game. It's weird how these things work out because Diamond Johnson's getting ready to bat again against Evan Kravitz. With Rivera at first, Page is at third, and in a one-run game. This is crazy. This is baseball. Last night it was Lambert, tonight it's Summerall. But both days, both games, it's Diamond Johnson in the exact same situation. Last night it was what? Well, at that point, my gosh, it was 10 to 9. Today it's 3 to 2. But it all remains the same. FAU trying to make a comeback against this homestanding Rice squad. It was the only batter the Kravitz faced last night. They would go to Jackson Arthasarthi after that. Uh, if he's warming up the bullpen right now, wouldn't that be nice? There's two right-handers warming out there. 42. Willie Amador. Another one that I can't tell. First pitch, Johnson throw down to second. Rivera is safe on the stolen base. It's short hop Proctor, but he was able to get the tag down, or I'm sorry, Cruz, but not in time. Well, there you go. It didn't work out exactly the same as last night. Johnson misses the pitch as well. well they, they've got something in the scouting report against Kravitz. because they've ran on him both games. Owen one to Johnson, runners at second and third and one out.
and in the dirt and knocked down and kept in front of Justin Collins, one and one. Striking the knees to Johnson. One ball, two strikes. Second pitcher warming up out there in a nice play. Chase or shit? Is that possible? He's still busy pitcher. So one and two to Diamond Johnson. This one's going to get away, and very far away from Justin Collins, but Pages does not go as it got away and then did not go. Second, uh, you know, it's him. Nick Silber is the other. Right field line. Down the right field line. Did not see him last night. So that turns out to just be a ball and not a wild pitch. Kravitz. Big Rice left-hander. All right, two and two to Johnson. Pages at third. Rivera at second. One out. Tying run at third. Go ahead, run at second. And shitter Johnson to the plate. It's a two-two. Lights it off down the third baseline and foul. So we will reset and have another 2 2 pitch. Battle again against Diamond Johnson for the second day in a row. There's two away. And we'll see if Cody Wilson has the answer. This would be a very much wasted opportunity. If the Owls can't get the tying and or or and and go ahead and run in. Wilson had a towering monster home run in the eighth inning last night. Turned out to be the game winner. Today he is one for two, single. His last time up and scored. The first Owls run. Takes ball one, one and up. Abraham already shedding his shin guards. He's gonna come to the plate because they're going to walk Cody Wilson to get to him. Put him on intentionally. The bases are going to be loaded at two outs for this fourth. Pitch. Intentional walk to Wilson. They're not going to let him beat them. We're going to deal now with Kevin Abraham, who was one for two with an RBI double. Well, obviously, always part of the game. The intentional walk is always there as a possibility, but I wonder if it's a little bit of a hit to a batter's pride in the man. The person that is going to be pitched to, or at least motivation. We'll see. It's one run game. First pitch to Abraham. It is in the dirt. Ball one. Remember, Rice had seven wild pitches last night by four different relievers, four different pitchers. And uh, 
couple of runs scored by FAU on wild pitches with runners at third. Back into the box. Comes the 1 0. Outside, two balls, no strikes, of course. Nowhere to put Kevin Abraham. Pages at third. Rivera at second. Wilson at first. Never. She were to lead to look. The house had three grand slams this season. The 2 0. Chopper to third, and that's going to end the inning. Bordell with Como takes it. Como takes the steps on the bag. And a big time scoring opportunity for FAU. Falls by the wayside. They do get a run. And it's now a 3 to 2 game. Bottom of the seventh next. Right after this. From Houston. To Rice, but you had every opportunity there to tie, if not take the lead, top of the seventh. Leaving the bases loaded, down by one, Jordan Porter back out to face Sarche, Como, Collins. One-on-one one count to uh, Sarche. Porter came on, gave up a hit. Bottom of the sixth, but got out of the inning. Outside. Two and one. down the first baseline. The line out. Leaping play by Frank stranded two more. Rice base runners. They left nine on base through seven innings. Two two pitch. Foul ball left side. <laughs> Four 
Anderson ready for the 2 2. Breaking ball. Got him looking. Nice pitch. Came off Sarche's shoulders and dropped right into the strike zone. By the way, Jordan Poor is making his 11th pitching appearance of the season. Has a 1 0 record and a 1.20 run average. We saw him starting. As a pitcher on Tuesday night, picking up the win against the Sam Cookman. And we saw him start in right field last night and go one for four with a triple. First pitch to Como, and on the ground is short. Strike to first by Frank. Two down. Now Justin Collins. Collins is 0 for 2. Two ground outs is short in a walk today. Swings and misses the first pitch from Jordan Poor. 0 and 1. Makes a running catch as he runs into the wall. What a nice play by Eric Rivera. Took off on the crack of the bat and went as far as he possibly could go to make that catch. One, two, three, seventh for Jordan Poor. We go to the eighth. It is three to two. Rice. Momentum seems to be switching its address here in Houston. Top of the eighth inning, Rice 3, FAU 2. FAU has scored a run in each of their last two at-bats. To uh, cut it to this one-run deficit, I'll have Richie Nietzsche, Tyler Frank, and Joe Montez. Against Kravitz. It's 0 for 2, a strikeout swinging and a line out turned into a double play. 1 for 5 9 last night with a run score. That was off the first pitch off the top of the grandstand. 1 1. Three runs, 10 hits, and no errors for Rice. Two runs, 6 hits, no errors for FAU. Fights this slow breaking pitch off again off the top of the grandstand. Room two. On a hot tin roof here at uh, Reckling Park. Love the press box and video booths and whatnot. Sweets here, I hope. 
Oats do. In the dirt. Mitzel holds up one ball, two strikes. This is Kravitz's numbers on the season. This is his 16th appearance. Has no record in a 5.40 earned run average coming in. 10 runs all earned in 16 and two thirds innings. Walking 11, striking out 17. Low again, two balls, two strikes. Maybe a little bit inside as well. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. That's a called strike three. Well, the last two were pretty borderline. Needs to got the benefit of the doubt, but didn't hear. He's down on strikes to start the eighth. Each of the last two innings, the innings in which FAU scored, they got their leadoff better off. Can't do it here in the eighth. Tyler Frank is 0 for 3. Ground out, fly out, ground out. This one's going to come inside and catch him between the shoulder blades. He'll be hit by the first pitch. So we'll trot down to first. That's the fifth batter that Kravitz has hit the season. And the tying run is on again for FAU for Joe Montez. Montez won for three. His single to lead off the seventh turned into FAU's second run. Throw over to first, and Frank is back in standing. Whenever you're looking for the owl, the FAU owl, most due for a home run is Joe Montez. Takes a call straight going one. He has won this season. But it came all the way back on March 14th. Ninety-seven plate appearances ago. This is to short, to second for one, to first, a double play, and that'll end the FAU eight. Second double play of the game. No, third double play of the game for Rice. Keeps them ahead three to two and flips it back down to the bottom half of the inning. The bottom third of the Rice lineup against Jordan Four next. Bottom of the eighth inning, Rice three, FAU two. We'll have to attempt a comeback victory for the second game in a row, and it'll be in their last possible at bat today. Let's go to the center to extra innings. First pitch of the bottom of the eighth inning is lined up the middle by Andrew Dunlap. He is on with the 11th hit of the game for Rice and his second of the afternoon. 
Now the 0 for 3, Bradley Knighting. Builder's choice that came on a bun attempt. Two ground outs to second. That all came against Fitz Cletty. Now he's facing left hander for the first time today, Jordan Poor. Yeah. He will bunt this one back to Poor, whose only play will be to first just in time. Lambert covering. He is knighting, able to get this sacrifice spot down. Dominic Cox. Cox is over three against Vince Buddy with ground down to two strikeouts. Conference USA score updates. In West Virginia, Marshall four, Louisiana Tech one. That's in the top of the seventh inning. Charlotte is on top of Old Dominion at home. In Charlotte, five to three. That's in the top of the eighth. Game one of the doubleheader between Southern Miss and Middle Tennessee is all Southern Miss, 11 to one in the top of the sixth inning. And game one of the doubleheader, Birmingham, UAB five, WKU zero, that's in the bottom of the fifth. First pitch swinging is Cox to left, he's gonna drop in front of Rivera, the throw to third is not gonna be in time. So Cox has his first hit of the game, and Rice threatening to add some insurance here with two hits. Sandwich around the sacrifice bunt. It's the bottom of the eighth inning. And Ford Proctor, who has three hits today. Talk to Jordan Poor, now John McCormack. Started out and then goes back into the dugout. Proctor singled in the first, in the fourth, and in the sixth, and each time was stranded at third base. He also was struck out with two on and two out in the second. Going to get a pinch runner for Rice, getting down to third base for Dunlap. Is Kendall Jeffries. He was scheduled to be the day starter, which ended up pitching in relief last night, and he also plays the field. The bats or whatever for. Rice Ells. Now John McCormack will come out of the dugout. March across the third base foul line. And Riggins going to feel very close in. Motions them all in to speak to them. I I even had this conversation with Coach Mack earlier in the year. I said, how often when you go out are you going to make a pitching change? He gave me a number in the 90s, 90th percentile. Um, but it seems as of late he's been a little more liberal with that. And we may have another instance here where he sticks with uh, the pitcher on the mound. People they get mad about Well, he's going to stick with Jordan Poor here. So with runners at first and third and one out, it'll still be Poor. First pitch to Proctor is, in fact, not a pitch. Instead of throw to first. And easily back in. Is Cox. Now foul ball back. 
of 1. To second diving play by Nietzsche, throw to first, not in time. Lambert thought he had the double play as he was heading towards the dugout. Just back in safely is Cox. Two away. It was nearly as crucial of a double play as, as Rice got in the top half. Is that a big Now John McCormack is going to come out and will go and get Jordan Bohr as he has to with the second mound visit. With the four for four Ryan Chandler announced, we'll tell you who the new FAU reliever is next in this one run ball game. Beaton's going to be asked to come up, come on to face Chandler, a left-hander. Two on, two out. Remembers it. First and third. Trying to keep it at a one run. Rice lead. Chandler four for four today. Low, I guess. All one. One zero is low and away. Two balls, no strikes. Inside corner, he gets the call here. Two and one. Heated. Five and zero. Oh. One point six nine earned run average. Earned save number two on the season last night. Two inning scoreless stint. It's two one pitch. Floats right over for called strike two. 
It's two and two, and the Rice Mans didn't like either one of those last two strike calls. We've been battling here. Step off ahead of the two two. Pitch. Just low. Three and two if you're looking ahead to the Owls ninth, FAU ninth, and I'm sure you are. Miranda Pages Rivera. Do up three, four, and five. And what they hope to still be just a one run game. So it's three and two to Chandler. To the plate. Runner goes. Popped up. Heaton. Will make the catch himself. And get out of the jam. And keep it at a 3-2 game as we go to the top half of the ninth. And again, Miranda leads it off right after this. Part of the Owls lineup, part of the FAU lineup to face still Evan Kravitz. One run game, three to two. FAU needing it here in the top of the ninth. Miranda first. Swings and misses. Pitch up in the strike zone, 0 and 1. Miranda's 0 for 3. Ground out, strike out, fly out. Top of the pitch in the dirt. No balls, two strikes. Pages next, then Rivera. If anyone reaches Gunnar Lambert, he do up fourth in the inning. Here's the 0-2. Miranda goes the opposite way and drops it into left field. The tying run is at first with nobody out in the ninth. Good piece of hitting there by Miranda against a like-handed lefty pitcher. Kravitz. Pedro Pages, one for three tonight. Or today, this afternoon. Representing the go-ahead run. Had a two-run shot. In the type of top of the ninth inning last night to create breathing room. And what was a one-run FAU lead? pitch. Just low ball one. Rice has been helped out today by good starting pitching that has turned into pretty good relief pitching and 
three double plays. One up. -oh. Oh, again, same spot. Two balls, no strikes. Good eye, Bob. Always. DH. Throw pages. Two zero. -oh. Outside corner at the knees. Two balls, one strike. Two one. Spread the knees again. Two and two. That looked very similar to the first two pitches of this bat. Pages is going to take a long walk out of the batter's box and reset himself as the count is even. Tying run at first, nobody out. The 2 2 pitch coming. Kravitz. goes to right field, goes with it the opposite way. It bounces off of, but knocked down right in front of Knighting. Two on, nobody out. So both down to a two strike count. Miranda, the left-handed batter, goes to left the opposite way. Pages, the right-handed batter, goes to right the opposite way. And the Owls have a shot here. The FAU Owls, in the top of the ninth, two on. Nobody out for Rivera, who's two for three. Eric Rivera singled in the fifth to break up a perfect game and then had an RBI single in the seventh to cut it to what it is now at three to two. And already Collins had just got done talking to Kravitz. We'll go and do it again. That time frame, Eric Rivera goes and speaks to Greg Mamula. Rivera's been very good as of late, but he's also a very good puncher. The opportunity would her to arise. He's got three on the season and quite a few in his Owls career. He does square, pulls back and takes a cold strike, 0 1. Just not being held on at first, Miranda. He's got Proctor in his rear view, but not, not too awfully close to the bag at second. Throw back to second. And with Cruz covering, Miranda dies back in safely. Ton of movement on the rice infield on possible bunt attempts. With Sarshak charging from first, and of course. Como having to hang near the third base bag with the lead runner at second. It's 0-1 to Rivera. Squares again. Bunts it off of himself in the box. He's not very pleased with himself. As it is, 0-2. All is here. Again, Rivera's had singles in each of his last two at bats. Owen two to him. Tying run in second. Here's the pitch. 
get some peace to stay alive. Pass it over towards the uh, big U on deck circle. Kind of like we're picking it up there. Still, 0-2. Oh, Kravitz rests the ball on the small of his back, now into the glove. His 0-2 pitch. Low, one ball, two strikes. One, two. It's upstairs. It's two balls, two strikes. Breaking pitch up again. It's three and two to Eric Rivera. Pitch away from loading the bases. Gunnar Lambert waiting on deck. You dug out all on the top step now. Boring Rivera. Pitch. It's chopped to third, gathered by Como, and he'll step on the bag to get the lead runner, but that's the only out he'll get. And there's one away. With the tying run at second base, they're going to pitch run for Pedro Pages. They're going to bring Steven Ravia into the ball game. will step in for the first time in this ball game. He made us a defensive replacement after Summer was pinched hit for. That's outside ball one. Lambert last night was 0 for 2. Had a sacrifice fly and a walk. Tying run at second. Go ahead, run at first. One out. This top of the ninth inning. 1-0 to Lambert. Puts that one in at the knees. Does Kravitz 1-1. One one. FAU has had their fair share of opportunities in this contest. Only been able to push two runs across after 14 last night. 1-1 one, one pitch. Bounces at the feet of Collins, he picks it up and will be going nowhere. Two and one. Two one pitch. Outside. That's where Collins set up. Three balls, one strike. Never 
comes into the contest, of course, with five home runs. See what he does here on three and one, deep to right. If it stays fair, it is a home run for Gunnar Lambert. FAU takes a five to three lead. My goodness, Gunnar Lambert. Took that three one offering over the banner in right field that shows all of Rice's postseason accomplishments. Gunnar Lambert mobbed just off of home plate as FAU takes the lead. And with one out and the bases clear, going to bring out assistant coach out of the rice bullpen or I'm sorry out of the rice dugout out of the rice bullpen Nick Silver is going to replace having Kravitz on the mound as FAU takes their first lead of the day in the top of the ninth inning five to three I'll tell you all about Silver next Rice is going to turn to sophomore right-hander Nick Silber, his 10th appearance with an 0-1 record and a 6.75 earn run average. He will come on to face Cody Wilson and for Gunnar Lambert's three-run, one-out homer. It's FAU in the lead at 5-3 in this top of the ninth inning. First pitch to Cody Wilson is a called strike. Wilson a strikeout. A single, a run scored, and an intentional walk in this ball game. All the way to the backstop on that pitch, one on one. This inning started out with singles by Miranda and Pages on two strike counts. Miranda's was 0-2, if I'm not mistaken. Pages was 2-2 or 3-2. Wilson fouls it off. Each as Kravitz tried to sneak strike three pass, went the opposite way. And then after a fielder's choice, Lambert is able to put the owls in the lead. Wilson goes down swinging on stripes. There's two outs for Kevin Abraham. Need to go into the archives, need to do some research, figure out how many times this year that FAU has come from behind to win games. We can tell, you know, 
know, records trailing after six, after seven, after eight. But uh, games, I mean, if they hold on here in the ninth, it's two games here in a row. We, we know, of course, the Miami game. A couple of other conference wins. Never, ever count out this swap. Abraham swings and misses at the first pitch to him on one. A ball to the on deck circle for Rice. First base side, 0 2. Kevin today started out the uh, FAU scoring with an RBI double back in the sixth. At that point was only their, what, third hit of the game. What a comeback. Have to close it out in the bottom half of this ninth inning. The 0 2 is way outside. One ball, two strikes. We'll see if they bring Drew Peden back out for the ninth or turn it over to the closer, Zach Schneider. Somebody's warming up in the bullpen, and that's who I expect. Could be. Holy cow, Kevin Abraham to left. Ah, oh, but he got underneath of it. Edge of the track, making the catch. Is Cox. I got a little excited there. My apologies. Abraham is retired, but FAU is in the lead. It goes to the bottom of the ninth inning in a 5-3 ball game. And it will be Zach Schneider next after this. FAU will turn it over to their closer, Zach Schneider. As we go to the bottom of the ninth inning, holding on to a 5 to 2, 5 to 3 lead, a 2 run lead over Rice. Three run shot, Gunnar Lambert. Yeah. 
Snyder's first pitch is to Trey Cruz, misses for ball one. It's three, four, and five for the Rice Owls in the bottom of the ninth inning. Schneider coming on, looking for his 12th save of the season. Going inside. 2 and 0. Chopper to second, gets a backs up on it. Throws a strike to Lambert and there's one down. Schneider comes in with record three and one, 1.10 on run average. Next up, Sarche is over four today. Side from Schneider, one and up. Hold on here. The U Owls will punch the series and go for a series sweep tomorrow. Two and up. Schneider sets. Box motion. He misses away. Three balls and no strikes. If anything, Achilles heel will sack. It's been his control this season. He's walked eight and 16 in the third innings. And now the 3-0. It's a called strike. If he were to put a runner on base, they would, they, being Rice, would then bring a tying run to the plate. There's a 3 1 pitch. Got that one right over to bring it all the way back to a full count. Side. Reddings pay off. This hits right, and that's going to drop in for a base hit. In front of David Miranda. And the tying run will come to the plate. Potential tying run in the form of Braden Como. Kobo is 1-4-4. Four, four. He had a two-run triple that came all the way back in the third inning. That and him scoring made up all of Rice's runs in this ball game. Shiner misses low, ball one. back, even it up at one and one. to bunt and it's a pretty good one up to third baseline picked up in fair or excuse me in foul territory by Zach Schneider nice heads up play to kill that one as Como would have easily been at first base so it's a one and two count Really 
heads up play on both ends. Como, the attempt at the bun, and Schneider was deemed to kill him in foul ground. Here's a looper to first. Lambert, and then safe with a hit first slide. It's Como, and John McCormack doesn't like it. Gunnar Lambert doesn't like it. Lambert made a nice play on the chopper, underhanded it to Schneider covering, and they come a little safe. Now the tying run is at first. With just one out, Mike's gonna speak with Trent Petrie, but he's gonna get his uh, opinion stated. It's not going to change anything, of course. Drama in the bottom of the ninth. Justin Collins is next. Abraham's going to go talk to Zach Schneider with this situation of brewing here in the night. So Zarche at second, Kobo at first. Collins, 0 for 3 with a walk today. Swings and misses at a pretty nasty, slow breaking pitch there. The Register 67 on the scoreboard. 0 and 1. one as the ball comes onto the field. Right. For that, the 14th hit of the ball game for Rice. This again, put the tying run at first. The you know, one low and outside. Crash to go get that one. Rice has matched 14 hits they posted last night. Which is just a couple off of the season high given up by FAU pitching. Time called and played by the batter, Collins. Two miles an hour in Collins. Comes up empty. No ball, or one ball and two strikes. By the way, Kendall Jeffries is on deck for Ricey came on as a pinch runner. Last inning. One, two. Sawed off and fouled into the bleachers. Still one and two. Collins takes his time getting back into the box. Looks to be set. Schneider is set. One two pitch. Got him swinging. Big pitch. A big strikeout. 
the FAU junior to push Rice down to their final out. And it is Kendall Jeffries. His first at bat of the game. Jeffries comes in. Just two for 13 on the season. Both singles, a couple of runs batted in. Batting 154. Limited offense for Rice. First pitch is in the dirt and knocked down by Abraham. Ball one. Two on and two out. Are you trying to clinch this series? You're in Houston. Your second streak come from behind a victory. That's the one up pitch. Right on the pipe, a called strike to Jeffries. Right handed batter. First at bat of this night, this day, still a day. 1-1, holds up on a pitch low, two balls, one strike. Jeffrey says a 5'11", 180 pound junior that we saw pitch last night. Pinch run today, and now hits for the first time today. He's ahead in the count, two and one. Outside, it's three and one. The left-hander, Bradley Knighting, is on deck for Rice. Be careful here with the three-one pitch. We saw what happened when Lambert Try to sneak one over against Lambert on 3 1. It's low, it's a walk. The bases are loaded with two outs for Knighting. So a clean single by Sarche, a controversial infield single by Como. And after a strikeout of Collins, Jeffries is walked. Knighting today is 0 for 4. A 0 for 3 with a sacrifice. He's a left handed batter. The tying run now at second. Two outs. What has been a dramatic top and now bottom half of this ninth inning. Pitch is low from Schneider, 1 0. Conference leading 11 saves in the season for Schneider, and he'll have to earn 12. Well. 1 0. Chopper to first. Lambert is going to take it himself. He will be uniting to the bag, and the Owls of FAU. Hang on to win five to three in their second straight comeback victory in Houston over Rice. Five runs, nine hits, and no errors for FAU. Three runs, 14 hits, and no errors for Rice. The win, believe it or not, is gonna go to Drew Peden. It's a team high six wins on the season for the reliever, Peden. And the loss will go to Evan Kravitz. Zach Schneider will earn his 12th save of the season. Stranding the bases loaded and stranding a total of 14 runners for Rice.
this afternoon. So your final score for the final time is FAU 5 and Rice 3. The FAU Owls improving to 29 and 9 on the season and 13 and 4 in Conference USA play. Well, that'll do it from Houston on this Saturday afternoon. Jonathan Frazier saying thank you to everyone out there for graciously listening. Have a great Saturday afternoon, evening. And we'll talk to you again tomorrow for the finale as FAU is taking the series to go for the sweep. At 2 p.m. Eastern first start tomorrow. Till then, good night.